down here for a minute. I'm going to get this up for her. She's going to push it over to Susan. I thought we were going to You bring that up here? No. Alex, I'm going to take it off my body. Yeah. I can get a step or two. Yeah. I'm good. You don't have to run. Just kind of leave it over there. You got the song? Don't get in a hurry. No, you're right here. Could I look at him, please? Good job, guys. All right. Glad to see everyone here with us this morning. And uh, open up your bulletin this morning. We'll uh, get these uh, read right quickly here. There's a lot of information crammed into the bulletin this morning. And uh, in the prayer list, we have the families of John Duffy Littrell, Wendelene Hutchison, and uh, we should remember those families this morning. And also all the names that's in our bulletins, if you want to remember those, and the lost this morning. And uh, pray for our nation, our world, our leaders, that uh, people's hearts will turn back to God. And... Uh, 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 Wanda Mans, it says, Wanda Mans test came uh, in with no signs of cancer. That's good. And Brad Hensley is, uh, is improving, uh, according to his, uh, grandmother Sharon, all of his ailments that he's got. So I'm glad to see that. And uh, Gay Stacy's uh, brain bleed says stopped. And the plastic surgeon says uh, surgery is not needed. So that's good. Billy and Glenda's family are thankful for the prayers of their granddaughter, Law Jaylee, and their new grandson, Matthew Dwayne. Bernice Young's daughter, uh, Barbie Ruth, is doing much better. And Phyllis Sloan has received a good report, and her surgery went well. And thankful that Russell Lee Cox's <coughs> EKG and blood work Friday was good. And Cody Case uh, is doing better. He was at the ER after being hit by a car and a bicycle in Prestonsburg. That's uh, Sharon Cottle's son-in-law's brother. <coughs> Let's remember those, all these families this morning. And uh, there's a lot of birthdays in here and happy anniversaries. In our news and notes, we've got a back-to-school bash is scheduled to July 31st. That's uh, right after our church service next Sunday. Our youth group will be inviting hot dogs and uh, the buns. Uh, so there's a side dish if you want to bring one. Looking forward to a good time. And also, our, the Resource Center uh, is conducting a shoe drive at the schools. So if you've got some new shoes, flip-flops, or new, or whatever you want to donate, you want to bring those, and uh, Joe will get those to the school. Also, our Camden Park schedule is August the 13th, and there's a sign-up sheet in the back if anyone wants to go. And uh, be more uh, information coming weeks. And our natural bridge is September the 18th. It's scheduled. And our hay ride in October is, is a sign-up sheet for a volleyball team. Uh, anybody interested in playing? Now you have to be 10 years and older. I told Ronnie he'd be able to play. So. <coughs> Uh, Sharon Haney, if you got any updates for the directory, get with Sister Sharon, and she'll make sure that it's uh, put in the uh, directory. And also, our training, our basic life-saving skills uh, here at the church, uh, including CPR and AED. There's a sign-up sheet in that also, and uh, Brother Doc is uh, heading that up and uh, for when it's going to take place. It says there will be certificates will be awarded. And also, our outreach programs are pop cans for the youth group and uh, saltine crackers for Christ Pantry. And our back-to-school program is gearing up. So, be much uh, prior for these things. My tongue is tied, and so <laughs> I'll turn over to Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. It is so good to be here today. I hope you feel the same way. Now, I got the icon on my shirt right and forgot my hearing aids. <laughs> so, when we get to the prayer section this morning, just speak up <clears throat> a little bit louder if you would. All right, let's turn to 
277. We'll get her singing started off right. Uh, the scripture this morning, I'm going to have to make this bigger, is from Revelation 5 9. And it says, And hast redeemed us. That's us. He has redeemed us from sin. <clears throat> Oh, what's the first word? Yeah. I, love I love to tell the story of the unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing. As nothing else can do, I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story till wonderful is seen. Than all our golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me, and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat. What seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell a story for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when it seems of glory, I sing the new, new song. Will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Next one is uh, number 563, and uh, the scripture from Acts chapter 16, verse 19. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Who did he tell that to? Who did the voice of God tell that? Come over to Macedonia. We need you over here. Paul. Paul. And he changed his direction and went. Okay. So our song this morning, let me get it just right. It's about a call. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Gospel light, 
let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light to bless the gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. Offering at the cross we lay, send the light, send the light, send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light to bless the gospel light, let it shine forever. Grace me everywhere about. Send the light, send the light. And a Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light. To bless the gospel, light. let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light to bless the gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light to bless the gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Good. Sounds good. Now, this is our prayer song this morning. By the way, <clears throat> getting into a serious area. It's always serious when you offer a prayer for someone else. And so, I, again, I like to laugh. That doesn't mean I'm not deadly serious about being a child of God. And I just got to thinking that for that bash out here, me and Russell Cox is going to high jump. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be a side. Hey, we laughed this morning. We forgot our trouble for a while and laughed. Never mind. <laughs> Getting feedback from the back. Uh, and now. <laughs> Good. Save me the trip. I, I was listening to Brother Paul read some of the good things that God has done. So my first instinct this morning was to look up and say, thank you for what you have done. Amen. Thank you for what you have done. You've blessed us. You've kept us. You have helped us in our spiritual journey, and you strengthen us when we come together like this. That's why he said, do that, do that. I need your strength. And you need the strength of God. Now, prayer requests, and please a little louder than normal. Raymond in the back. Raymond. Raymond? Wonderful. We all know why he don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Raymond. Uh, you have been a good witness to the to the to the working of God and now you see it in a friend. My goodness. 
I, I, don't, I don't know if I ever felt worthy, but Tom's touched on something this morning. I think when I kneel before God, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be awful humble. I'm not going to try to tell him anything except I'm an unworthy servant. That's going to be my attitude. I'm not worthy of what you're going to give me. Anyone else? I want to thank everyone for the prayers for Les Lee. Uh, prayers for Lee. Okay, uh, Wanda and uh, Russell Lee. Russell's uh, boy, Russell Lee. And I, uh, Sister uh, Charlene is going to get him a card, <coughs> Wanda, if you'll get him a address card from the church. The general shots in my knee is working great, and I thank God for that. I've gone back to taking my morning walks. Feeling good. So you have a good feeling in your knee. Yeah. Like spring chicken. I'd, I'd like to get that in my back, but maybe that'll come. Thank you, Wilma. That, and she mentioned a morning walk. But she's got an ideal place out there. There's not too many race cars in the cemetery. So she's got an ideal place. Thank you, Wilma. Anyone else? Uh, continue to remember my brother, Paul. He was supposed to have a dog cart surgery two weeks ago, but they canceled that and have rescheduled it this coming week. And he also wanted to thank you all for the prayers, and you got his card, and he's very appreciative of it. Thank you. That's Joe's. Huh? Brother Paul. Okay, brother to Paul. Okay. It's brother. It's her brother. Oh, her brother. Her brother. She's got a whole lot of. Me too, Paul. Yeah. Jimmy, remember my one of my older brothers, James. Uh, I talked to my sister this morning. He's having some more health issues, so. Uh, Remember him. Paul's brother James having health issues. It seems like there, I don't know if we know more people, we're aware of more that's going on, but it just seems like there's a whole lot of people getting sick. You feel anything like that, Doc? Or? Yeah. <laughs> right there's the source, he can tell you. Mm. So thank the Lord if you're halfway healthy, who? Huh? Okay, Alan Carty. I think we have him on our list, don't yeah. we? Know? Prayer list. Is he yeah. still there? If not, we put him on there. Yeah, Alan Carty. I thank everyone for the prayers for Cody. Uh, it was a scary situation to begin with, but it turned out well. Okay. And uh, if you will please remember my new grandson-in-law, Chris Prolikowski. He's at Fort Gordon in Georgia for the next four months for advanced officers training. And it's a little hard on the new newlyweds. They've only been married two weeks and now he's off for four months. So keep both of them in your prayers. Thank you. Now, who, who, which one do you marry? Caitlin, the Caitlin. oldest. Okay. oldest. We know Caitlin. Yes. Maybe we'll meet him, huh? Well, he's been here. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you, Sharon. Anyone else? Jimmy, I started a new medicine to help keep my heart or put it back in the rhythm. Okay. And so far, the good Lord's took care of me. All right. I'll tell you this, good. we don't want you passing out anymore. <coughs> oh. For sure. That's scary. Yes, it is. Thank you, honey. Anybody else? Got a lot of people out with uh, just been exposed to COVID, so that's all right. Yeah. Brother William and I talked about that, and then Sister Joyce meant to go. It looked like it was making a little comeback, but let's be careful if we're exposed to somebody, just stay at the house. That's what Billy and Glenda and Dan and Linda did this morning. Who did? Dorcas. Oh. 
Okay, okay, okay. Anybody else? It's not good stuff. It's not good stuff. But you can. We did survive it. Maybe I hope and pray everybody else gets it does too. What's that boy want, Jeff? He says, no, no, no. Okay. All right, anybody else? I want to ask you something here this morning. That's very important. Do you feel comfortable in this church? Nobody does? Oh, okay. I know you did. All right, we got this prayer song here, and it's a little unusual. Sometimes we'd use it for communion. You got to think of this as break the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And the bread we eat is his word uh, that he's left for us to follow. But we're going to break the bread of life right here on this song. Now, the scripture for that is found in Luke chapter 9, verse 16. And it says, When he took the five loaves and the two fishes and blessed them, Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. By God the sea, on the sacred page, I seek Thee, Lord. My spirit aches for Thee, O living Word. Bless Thou the truth, dear Lord, to By Galilee, then shall all bondage cease, all fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all and all. Thou art the bread of life, Everything we uh, like, say this cold thing's coming back, and so on. We still got a good crowd. Sure was encouraging to hear all the things that God's done for us, and we we remember that. Certainly, I do. Uh, this morning, I'm going to read a little bit from Philippians. Uh, one of my verses I like to bring up. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're going to ask Brother Alex to come up and lead us in prayer. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we come to you this morning, and we want to continue to give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for your many, many blessings, Lord. Thank you for all the answered prayers that, that you have answered for us, Lord, and, and all the, the well-being. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to get out of the bed and to be able to come back out to this place, Lord, to meet with one another, Lord, to serve you, to worship you. Lord, I want to ask that you continue to be with all those other individuals, Lord, that are needing you today. The, the got things going on in their lives that, that have been requested today that, that you be with them, whether it be health or, or travel or just things going on in their lives, Lord. Be with those that, that uh, 
were unspoken as well, Lord, that you know the hearts of every man. Lord, I want to ask that you continue to be with all those that are lost out in this world today. That through, that through your word, Lord, that they may hear, that they may come to a realization, Lord, and, and come to you before this life here on this earth is over. Lord, I want to ask that you continue to be with uh, the individuals, Lord, and our, our governments and our um, leaders, Lord, that, that decisions may be made and pleasing to you. Lord, be with our, our military men and women as they fight for our country, fight for our lives, Lord, that they, they fight to give us the right to sit here today. Amen. Lord, be with all those that are out there protecting us every day, all of our emergency response, and just be with them, guide them, Lord, help them to remember their training that they may stay as safe as possible. Lord, just thank you for everything that you continue to do for us. Lord, and I want to ask that you, you be with uh, Brother Doc and, and uh, Paul as they bring your word, that our ears may be open and we may all receive a blessing here today. And Lord, be with the teachers downstairs and, and that they may lead our children in a way that, that is growing and pleasing to you. And all these things in accordance with your will and in Christ's name, amen. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, brother. It's Sunday morning. We take time to partake of the emblems, which represents Jesus' body broken on the cross and His blood shed on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins. We take a reading, and from this morning, I'm going to read from First Corinthians, uh, the, <clears throat> let's see, eleventh chapter, starting with verse twenty-three. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this wherever, whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Going to have the verse another song and ask the elder deacons and uh, helpers to serve the communion. He said, It is finished. And he bowed his head. John chapter 19, verse 30. Tis sweet to remember the love of my Lord Who suffered on dark Calvary Redemption I know was the price of his blood When Jesus was dying for me Love, love, such wonderful love Love, love, so full and so free no wonder the sun failed to shine from above When Jesus was dying for me To think one so holy could die in my stead What love and compassion I see In tones full of pity, tis finished, he said When Jesus was dying for me Love, love such wonderful love, 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 so full and so free. No wonder the sun failed to shine from above when Jesus was dying for me. I think of the sorrow and pain that he bore that day as he hung on the tree and blush when I see the rough crown that he wore when Jesus was dying for me. Love, love, such wonderful love. Love, love, so full and so free. No wonder the sun failed to shine from above when Jesus was dying for me. Let us pray. Our 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we take the time to stop and reflect on the sacrifice that you made for us, and the cleansing of our sins, and we take this bread, dear Heavenly Father, that represents that body on the cross. We pray that we take it in a manner that is pleasing to thee, and we thank you, dear Lord, for that sacrifice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord, as we continue in our prayer, we seek to accept this represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Himself on the cross for our sins, so we may live. We would ask that there be any things we said or done or what to speak of to you, that you please forgive us. Amen. Get <coughs> anyone was overlooked, please raise your hand and we'll be glad to serve you. Sunday morning, we're given the opportunity to return a portion of what we've been blessed with to the service of the Lord. Uh, we customarily take a reading. This morning, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 9, uh, starting verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound in every good work. So we're going to have the verses in another song. 361. 361. 361 in the Pious Round Collection. Scripture. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 20. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior's pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through 
though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. I am a loving Savior up in glory land. I don't expect to stop until I with him stand. He's waiting now for me in heaven's open door, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at all in this world anymore. <coughs> we want to thank you for the generous gift, and you can be sure it'll be used for the building of the church. We're going to turn the services over now to Brother Paul. <coughs> leave that light there, I might need it. <laughs> Glad to be back uh, out to the house of the Lord this morning, and we thank God for another opportunity that we have to be able to spread His gospel, and it's His word, not my word, and we thank Him for the word that feeds us, it strengthens us, and it guides us. We're going to turn to your Bibles. I implore you that you do. That you turn to Romans, the eighth chapter this morning. And we thank Him that we're among the living this morning, and we're all going to die at one point, unless the Lord comes back, and then we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And He said, Then we'll be caught up with Him forever to be with the Lord. But we're all going to die in one point or another. We don't know how death is going to take us out. Me and Sister Donna was talking a little while ago. But we're all going to die, whether it's COVID, whether it's heart attack, cancer, diabetes, whether it's a car accident or whatever. We're appointed to die. That's our natural body. But our message today is that there is life in the Spirit. There's life in Jesus Christ. That's where our life is. Absolutely. Not in this life. Our life is on the <clears throat> other side. Eternal life. In the 8th chapter of Romans, Paul speaking to the Roman church, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We that are Christians are not condemned that walk with Christ because we are not after, we do not walk after the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the Spirit. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. 
And these are contrary the one to the other, so that they cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. We walk in the Spirit. And where do we walk in the Spirit? Life is in the Spirit. The Spirit that God gives us. Christians are to live by the Spirit's help. The Christians must believe that the Spirit is with him or her, having been sent by God into their hearts. Mm. Yeah. Galatians, in the fourth chapter, get there. <clears throat> And the sixth verse says, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We are heirs with Jesus Christ to the heavenly kingdom that he's gone to prepare for us. The believer must yield to the Spirit. We must submit our own desires to the Spirit. We must depend on the Spirit's help. The believer also lives by the Spirit. They will not fulfill the lust of the Spirit, but will do the will of the Spirit. If we give our life to Jesus Christ, who, did, who died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, shed his life-giving blood for us. We've repented of our sins. We've confessed that he is the Son of God, and we have been immersed in baptism. And he says that we need to rise and walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. That Holy Spirit fills us. Mm -hmm. It lives within us. It breathes in us. Mm -hmm. And we grow in the Spirit. Jesus Christ has made us free from the law of sin. We have lived in Jesus Christ. It's because he lives in us. In Romans, the seventh chapter, starting with 18 verse, it says, Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not Paul had a struggle we all have a struggle we want to do the things of the flesh but the spirit is bidding us not to do the things of the flesh we have a lust to do the things that's in the world but we need to obey what the spirit tells us to do He goes on to say, it's for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Isn't that what we all do? We have a want to do what's wrong. But the Spirit bids us not to do those things. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The article this morning in the, in the Gospel Minutes, that we're all sinners. We are sinners saved by grace. That's right. We all commit sin. But we need to know who we take those sins to, who to give those sins to. He said, not let the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, Paul is saying, if you've done something in this day that you know it's wrong, we need to ask God to forgive us of those things, of those sins that we have done in our life. You might have done something to somebody that you don't even know that you did it to. You might have supposed to have done something, but you didn't do it. Verse 20 says, Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Amen. When we're 
doing the things that the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Satan is right there with him, hounding you and telling you the opposite. Yeah. Not to do what the Spirit bids you to do. Yeah. Paul says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Who is that inward man? That inward man is the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus Christ that lives in our hearts. He takes up his abode in you. He lives in you. He says, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Jesus Christ has made us free from the law of sin. We have life in Christ because we live and he lives in us. Paul says that the law of the mind is equal with the law of God after the inward man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In verse 6 of Romans 7, it says, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead within, wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Paul said that we were delivered from the law. We died out from the law and what we were being held to. And that the law which could not save us, but we serve in newness of the spirit. In other words, the influence of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life is to be obedience to the good works that the Spirit wants us to do. This is what he means when he says that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, apart from the indwelling Holy Spirit, the law of sin, who dominated our life. Sin at one time dominated our life. It dominates every person's life that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Verse 3 says in, in Romans 8, it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. The law, being weak, he could not save us. In Acts 13, 39, it says that we, could, that we could not be justified by the law of Moses. Only by the blood of Christ, who God raised from the dead, could justify us who saw no corruption. There was no corruption in Jesus Christ. God raised him from the grave. He's going back to prepare a place for those that love and serve him. He's coming back to get his church that he died for. And if you have been born again, been submerged in the watery grave and walking in the newness of life, and as Paul said in his word this morning in the Sunday school, that he had finished his course. He had ran the race, and he said, I'm ready now to be delivered. And if you have done... Those things that Apostle Paul said that he had done, you are ready to be delivered. You are ready to go home with the Lord and Savior to be with him forevermore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only the blood of Jesus Christ, who God raised from the dead, could justify us. Christ's blood is the only thing that will cleanse us from the life of sin. The world and its beliefs will not save you. The world and its justifications will not give you eternal life. The world will give you damnation. The world will give you eternal hell and punishment. The only thing that there is eternal life in, and that is in the life of the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ's blood is the only thing that will cleanse you and will make you whole. He says that Jesus Christ was preached... For the forgiveness of sins, who condemns sin in the flesh. Jesus Christ took your sins and my sins 
and nailed them to the cross. He carried my sins with him to the cross. He took what should have been my punishments and your punishments. We should have been the one that had died. But he loved us so much, it was foreordained before the foundation of the world that he would give his life for you and me. Absolutely, yes. But what do we do? We trample his name under the mud. We spit upon him, just as they did. We pluck his beard. We beat him. He was tormented to where you couldn't even recognize him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. There was no sin in Jesus Christ. There was no guile found within him. He was perfect. That he might be made the righteousness of God in him. Verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We should not be walking after the flesh and to fulfill the lust, but we should be walking after the Spirit of God, letting that Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in directing our path the way that he wants us to go. Sixth chapter of Romans, the Bible says that we are freed from sin. What shall we say then? Shall we condemn? Shall we continue in sin that sin may abound? God forbid. Says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? When we accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, we died out to sin. So we don't live anymore in sin. That doesn't mean that we don't commit sins. We all commit sins. But Jesus Christ is our advocate when we do sin. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death like that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When we come out of that watery grave, we need to walk as Jesus Christ walked. We need to walk the straight on our path that he leads us and guides us and directs our path. He says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, so shall we be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that your old man is crucified, that old man that you and I had, that old man that dwelled within us, that old carnal mind, he was crucified. That the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. That old body of sin that you and I carried around, that old ball and chain that we had that was holding us back. That was dragging us down to a devil's hell. It's been crucified. He said, henceforth we should not serve sin. Who should we serve? He says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Jesus Christ freed us from sin. When he died on that cross, when the middle wall partition was split down the middle, when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we were freed from sin. The spirit of life gives us freedom from the power of sin. In the book of John, chapter 3, starting with verse 5. 
It says, and he said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The worldly system will not give you eternal life. Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. But by, without being born of the water and of the spirit, we're lost. And without being immersed in the watery grave, you're lost. Jesus Christ gives us life. The Spirit gives us life. Our minds are carnal. They're controlled by the nature of sin. And so spiritually minded is to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Who gives you the understanding of the Word of God? It's your Holy Spirit that gives you the understanding of it. He said to study and to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of God. Galatians 6, starting with verse 6, says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also he reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. Our minds need to resist the devil because God's grace is greater than the world's lust that draws us away from him. We need to put our trust and faith in God. We need to let his Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct our path. We need to study his word and to, that his word teaches us and gives us understanding. Verse 5 in chapter 8 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For, be, for to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritual-mindedness gives us peace in our life. It gives us life. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The laws of the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. So they that are pure in the flesh, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How can you say if you do not know the love of Christ in your life that you're pleasing God? I've heard people say, well, I've got it all worked out. God's told me I'm all right. But they have never accepted the love of God in their life. They have never confessed that he's the son of God. They have never been immersed in baptism. And they've never let the love of God come into their life. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 says, Be ye, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the Spirit of God in your hearts, you're not a child of God. You don't belong to him. You still belong to Satan. There's only two masters in this world. That's either God or that's Satan. You're either on the right hand or you're on the left hand. There's no in-between. You cannot straddle the fence 
and get to heaven. He said, I'd rather for you to be cold or hot. He said, if, I, if you're lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Mm. It's time. And it's high time because time is running out. To put your faith in God. Believe upon Him as your Lord and Savior. He said, seek me while I may be found. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. Verse 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead... Because of sin. If Christ lives in us, that body of sin has died. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. We have become alive because of the Spirit. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make you alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Mm. Isn't it great that when we accept Jesus Christ in our life, we become alive? That's right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. If you're living after the things of this world and the things that Satan has to offer you, you're going to die. You're going to die a physical death and you're also going to die an eternal death, being separated from the love of God. Look what it says, the last half of that verse there. He says, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify or you kill the body or the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You've got to kill, you've got to mortify the deeds of sin before you can live. For when we have the Spirit in our hearts and Christ raises us in our life, we are alive through the Spirit when we kill the sin out of our life. We become alive and then we begin to live. Verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That also means daughters. We are led by the Spirit. Verse 15 says, For if ye for ye have not received the spirit of bondage then, the bondage was sin. The law could not save us. It says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are now in God's family. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit places us in his family, and we have an intimacy with God. We have been adopted. Everybody knows what adoption is. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a family, somebody else adopts you and you become their family. We were not Christ's family until we were adopted into it. And we became alive in his family through the Spirit by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. <coughs> Verse 16 says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay. He knows who his children is. He knows who are not his children. 
And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. As I said earlier, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We become part of that family. So if that we suffer with him, so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. For I reckon that the suffering of this world, of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The little bit of suffering that we go through down here in this life, the little bit of agony, the torture, the pain, the sickness, it is not going to be compared to the glory that we have waiting for us if we endure to the end, if we finish our course, as Apostle Paul said, if we have run the race with patience, it's not going to be compared to the glory that is waiting for you and I. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 says, In whom ye also trusted... After ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. For in that the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Our inheritance. Our inheritance is not in this life. A lot of people make a will to leave what they've got, their possessions, to their loved ones or somebody else or to an organization. But my inheritance through the sealed Holy Spirit of God and His promise is eternal life with Him and glory. That's right. <clears throat> the Christians are heirs of God through adoption. Through his Holy Spirit. And we only begin to live when we give our hearts to him. I'm going to close out with verse 18. In Romans. As I just read, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. I'm going to go ahead and read 19, might as well. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. We wait for that change, that manifestation, that change that our earthly body is going to be changed to a heavenly body, a spiritual body where there's no corruption, there's no dying, there's no death. He said, I'll wipe all your tears away. Just think, you're going to go to live with Jesus Christ one of these days when this life is over. If we endure to the end, if we have finished the course and ran the race with patience, will there be no crying, no more dying, no more weeping, He said, all the former things are passed away. He said, behold, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. The former lot things in this life you'll have no remembrance of. Why would you want to go to a place of eternal bliss and then you have memories of this life? Of torture, pain, agony, and sickness, and death. If you did, it wouldn't be what Christ promised it would be. Christ lives in us. There's life in the Spirit. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, as you heard the word, if you believed on it, you've accepted it, you confess Him as the Lord and Savior that died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Shed His life-giving blood for you and I. You confessed Him. And you've been 
baptized from the watery grave. You have these opportunities to do these things today and to make Jesus Christ your Savior, your brother, your Lord and Savior. And we can become part of that family and to live with him eternally as we stand and sing. Our scripture is found in Matthew 11 and verse 28. <coughs> Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Hark the gentle the voice of Jesus calleth tenderly upon your ear. Sweet his cry of love and pity calleth turn and listen, stay and hear. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, lean upon your dear Lord's breath. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Take his yoke, for he is meek and lowly, bear his burden to him turn. He who calleth is the master holy, he will teach if you will learn. You that labor and are heavy laden, lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Then his loving, tender voice obeying, bear his yoke, his burden take. Find the yoke, his hand is on you, lay light and easy for your sake. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give. Preacher, you got something out of the message today. That wasn't the actual message that I had planned on doing today. But mm -hmm. uh, Joe asked me the other day, she said, Did you got your message done? I said, well, yeah, but I started on another one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but it is what the Lord wants to do, not, not me. So uh, I pray good. that uh, good, good. we can... Put our trust and faith in him. Let us lead God and direct our paths. Anybody have a word before we dismiss? Uh, Paul, I've been uh, contacted and asked if we as a congregation want to sing at the Sorter Festival this year. And we need to let them know fairly quickly that if, if we commit to it, we need to do it. So if it's something that, uh, that we've done it before, if we want to do it, uh, we need to get together and decide Okay. Said if uh, anybody was interested in singing at the Sorghum Festival this year, they know we can get with them. Yeah. We used to do that quite often, didn't we? Yeah. 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 I don't think he's done it for a little while. No. Uh, I don't think we'll have any youth meeting tonight because most of our youth group is out sick. So. I don't know about they'll, the adults. They'll have their adult thing here, I assume. But yeah. the, kid, yeah. the kids are either sick or they've yeah. been exposed to the COVID. Yeah. So we got so. some that is sick with it, some that's yeah. exposed. So we'll not have a meeting on the ground. We'll hopefully they'll all be yeah. wet, ready for next week when we have our yeah. meeting for our back to school. Should hopefully everybody, they should all be back next week. So, yeah. Tonight, Tom? We will have it here in house and virtual. At 7 okay. In house and at virtual at 7 o'clock tonight, Brother Tom said. All right, so. Or just our our little youth group is uh, they were sick this week so they didn't want to get anybody else exposed so they'll be back next Sunday and uh, good Lord willing I better clear something up we're in church 
Me and Russell is not going to high jump. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's not going to do that. Joe said that he would, he said they'd bury the rope for you. Uh, 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 uh. You, you what? Bury, bury the rope. Bury the rope for you. Yeah. Well, it'd have to be. <laughs> I think you can get over it. Yeah, probably. All right. All right. Been a good day. I, I've just enjoyed being with you, being with you. So many of you, we've been together years and years and years, and, and uh, it's just good. <clears throat> That's what family's for. You got it's a family. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Brother William, you could dismiss us. Hello, everybody.